Right now on Sunrise, a deadly shooting in St. Paul. What we know and what police have to say about their 33rd homicide of 2020, the highest homicide rate in 25 years. Plus, Congress keeping its promise, a $900 billion relief package now heading to the president's desk, when you could see that $600 check in your bank account. Today, the warmest of the next seven. Get ready for a major temperature dip, plus some track in the chance of a white Christmas. John Mulaney taking a break from the stage, what the popular comedian is getting help for. Plus, now that we have two vaccines, how long do we have to wear these masks? When can we stop wearing them? We have the answer. It's Tuesday, December 22nd. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas, especially in Burnsville. Now check it out. Neighbors there competing over who can display the most holiday cheer. Oh, that looks amazing. More on that in a few minutes. But first, we want to know where is your favorite place to see holiday lights? Maybe it's your own neighborhood. Hey, let us know. Use your favorite hashtag Sunrisers and selfishly. I want to know because I was disappointed I this week. Seen, but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I go to the right spots. Gia? You got to hit the right There's spots. Some good ones out Apparently there. Burnsville. I need to hit some <laughs> spots in general. I haven't even been anywhere to check out any lights. Yeah, I live Get right. Out. Yeah, I live right downtown. So there isn't really any lights. <laughs> City lights. City lights, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into the uh, temperatures right now. You're waking up to temperatures in the 20s, 23 right now in the Twin Cities. Uh, then you'll see temperatures uh, in and around the metro, mainly in the low to mid 20s. Uh, backing up to radar, you'll notice uh, we do have some areas seeing some snow, especially north, uh, or rather flurries is the better term to say. Uh, this will continue pushing off to the east throughout the day. Uh, so areas like Brainerd up to Bemidji, Thief River, Grand uh, Rapids, Duluth, maybe even can see a few light snow showers pushing through. The rest, uh, we'll see some cloud cover with temperatures in the 40s today. Lows tonight, not as cold in the 30s. I'm tracking some snow for tomorrow. Get ready. All eyes on the forecast, guys. Thanks. We're looking at the, the roads for you this morning. 494 Fish Lake Road. If you're waking up uh, in the Maple Grove area where traffic's still pretty quiet, starting to get a little bit more crowded, but right now uh, nothing to really slow you down there. Around the Twin Cities Metro, no reported crashes except for this one uh, down near Egan, which is exactly where we've been following breaking news throughout the morning. We actually just got off the phone with uh, the police there who tell us this crash near Metcalf and Slater Road was a deadly crash. Two people were in the, the car at the time. Only one of them survived. No word on the condition of the other person in that vehicle or what caused the crash. And also breaking this morning, we're learning more about a deadly shooting in St. Paul. Police say whoever pulled the trigger is still on the run. Gordon Severson is live at the St. Paul Police Station with the very latest. Gordon. Yeah, Gia, St. Paul police were actually at two different scenes last night, but they don't know how or if they're connected. They were originally called out to the 300 block of Larpenter Avenue East after a 911 caller reported seeing a man sitting in a car with a serious gunshot wound. Paramedics were called in to help, but unfortunately they weren't able to save his life. Police say that the man was pronounced dead at the scene, but they don't know if he was shot here or somewhere else and he drove to this location. There was also a police standoff in the 100 block of Larpenter Avenue West last night. Police wouldn't give us a lot of information about what was going on there and how or if it was connected to the shooting. It's very stressful. It's stressful for our officers and it's stressful for our community. Um, and we need the community's help. Uh, it appears that people are reaching for guns to settle their disputes. And if anybody out there knows somebody that's carrying a gun illegally to call us uh, so that we can um, take that gun off the street. We don't know how the shooter and the victim know each other. We're hoping to get some more information later this morning when we get an update from St. Paul Police. Now they tell us this is the 33rd homicide of the year here in St. Paul. It's the highest homicide rate that the city has seen in 25 years. Gia, back to you. Yeah, a lot of concern over that statistic. Thanks, Gordon. Happening today, Governor Walls will be giving us an update on vaccine distribution here in Minnesota. He'll be joined by Minnesota Department of Health leaders. That starts at 2 this afternoon. And doses of Moderna's vaccine just arrived in the state yesterday. About 95,000 doses expected to show up this week. The state already has about 46,000 doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine. State health officials are expecting more than 30,000 this week. 
With news of the second vaccine, there's also some positive headlines when we look at the numbers. Nearly 2,000 new cases reported. That's these blue bars right here, pretty low. We haven't seen it that low since about uh, October, two months. We're also learning the seven day positivity rate has dipped below high risk level. It's now at 8.9%. The two week moving average, this dotted line, hitting at about 3,000 cases per day. Now, we also are looking at uh, the number of deaths in Minnesota. We did see 22 more lives lost to COVID. Of course, it's nothing like what we were seeing in the 80s, 90s, almost even to the 100 range back earlier this month. And also we're taking a look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin had another day below 1000 when it comes to new infections, about 1400. Now it's two week average is about 3000 new cases per day. As you can see right here, the state said while eight more deaths have been counted, 91% of people are recovering. Time 605 sunrises live at the White House this morning where a $900 billion COVID stimulus is awaiting President Trump's signature after Congress passed it late last night. We're taking a look at how lawmakers are reacting. Now the deal is done and to let you know when you could see that stimulus money in your bank account. So first, the House of Representatives approved the $900 billion pandemic relief bill by a 359 to 53 vote. Also tacked on a $1.4 trillion spending package and thousands of pages of end of session business. Then late last night, the Senate gave the bill the OK by a vote of 92 to 6, six Republicans voting no. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted about the bipartisan bill, saying that the American people can rest assured that more help is on the way. Included in the bill, $600 payments for individual Americans making less than $75,000 a year and couples making less than $150,000, plus $600 for each child. So an eligible family of four can expect to receive $2,400. In a statement, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders said the payments improved the overall bill, but the legislation did not go anywhere near far enough. So the big question remains this morning. When will you see that money in your bank account? Well, in an interview on CNBC on Monday, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said direct payments would begin arriving in bank accounts already by next week. President Trump still hasn't tweeted about the bill as of this morning, but is expected to sign the legislation in the coming days. Definitely some really big news for a lot of families that are eager and have been waiting months and months for something. Yeah, much needed uh, relief for some folks just to be able to, you know, pay the bills, uh, pay for gas. Um, right. So, yeah, we'll see how this how this one goes and how it does. Thanks, Alicia. Well, you can get all the latest stim on the stimulus sent right to your phone right here. Just text 763-797-7215. We'll respond with everything we know, including how you can find out if you qualify for the next payment. Now here's a look at some other top stories in your morning rush. A St. Paul homeless encampment that fire officials were calling a death trap has been cleared. It was located at Kellogg Park. Firefighters say as we get into the colder months, there was concern about people using propane tanks to heat their tents. City officials say everyone at the camp was offered a room to stay. A St. Paul man is arrested for allegedly carrying out five armed carjackings and robberies in just over an hour. They all happened last month in Minneapolis. 20 year old Brandon Rock is charged with six felonies, including aggravated robbery and assault with a dangerous weapon. Today, a vigil and march for freedom to those who lost their lives to COVID-19 behind bars. It's being led by the Twin Cities Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee. The virus has spread in the prison system, infecting hundreds of prisoners and prison workers and killing several prisoners. We're told ice skates are flying off the shelves as everyone is gearing up for ice skating season. Pierce Skate and Ski in Bloomington told us that they saw more customers in the past two days than the past three weeks combined. All this as the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board gears up to open 39 rinks in 19 different locations, including this one here in North Minneapolis. They say right now they're just waiting for the temperatures to drop far enough so that they can open up for the season. And that is your Tuesday Morning Rush. Guy, what's our one thing weather today? Mild today. We'll see temperatures in the 40s, especially uh, by late day. Otherwise, more clouds than sun. And hey, drive times are still looking good here around the metro. If you're waking up uh, in the Rogers area coming towards Maple Grove, it's uh, pretty average, about 12 minutes to get at the Fish Lake split. Well, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are already being administered across the country. And while it's good news, it doesn't mean you can just toss your mask away after you get yours. Ali Levine explains why. So people may be wondering this, and it's a really good question. If you're vaccinated, do you still need to wear a mask? And, and the answer is yes, for several reasons. 
Not exactly the answer people are hoping for, though Dr. Pyle Coley says there's science behind it. We don't yet know whether the vaccine just protects the individual getting the vaccine or also protects those around them. I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, if our behavior as Americans changes so that, yeah, like if, if we have a cold or if, if we think we might have the flu, we put a mask on before we leave. Dr. Max Talent says it's probably going to be harder to lose the mask than you think. The psychologist has pretty much gotten used to wearing his everywhere he goes. You know, it's, it's just become this thing that you always grab before you leave the house. He expects masks to live on in a post-pandemic world because people have gotten used to them. And that's what people do. We get used to things. Humans are incredibly adaptable, thank goodness, because we have had to deal with so much change in such a short period of time. Yeah, that is um, pretty interesting stuff there. Well, scandal at West Point now. What nearly 80 cadets were caught doing during class that could get them kicked out of school for good. A community guardian lost to COVID-19. We look at the life of Sai Shuo Yang and the legacy he's leaving on the Hmong community. Then a holiday travel forecast. What to expect if you're headed to the airport later this week.